Yo, what is good everyone? Your boy Deke back again with another vid. Sorry it's been a minute. Had a little bit of an eventful slash uh, busy last three to four days on Friday. Drove up to Erie. Saturday was in a golf outing and then on Sunday got the opportunity to go to the Steelers-Bills game. So there wasn't too much room to be posting on YouTube. And then on Monday was able to react to the Steelers-Bills game on the podcast. So we're sitting here on a Tuesday. I've gathered myself, I've caught up on sleep. I wanna do like a final recap for the YouTube channel. So it's gonna be really simple. I'm just gonna go player by player and then give a quick breakdown and then my favorite play by that player in this week one game. So we'll start off with number seven, QB1, Big Ben. Great game in my opinion. I don't think the stats tell the whole story. First half, obviously was a slow start. I just don't know what more we could have asked of Ben. Maybe there was a pass or two he could have thrown better, but the offensive line, uh, was in shambles. Guys were getting after the quarterback really quick. Ben had to get the ball out quick. You could even see on that one play, he had to throw the ball off of his back foot to Claypool. Uh, it would have been a tough catch, but probably should have caught it. That was really the story of the first half. Second half, flipped the switch, not on the offensive line, but Ben started playing better, clutched up. We had three really good drives, and then the final one iced it, back shoulder to Juju, then obviously the slant across the middle to Claypool. We ended up kicking the field goal. I don't think the stats tell the whole story of Big Ben's game. I think he finished with like 180 yards and a touchdown, but you got to think of some of those pass interferences. The Deontay Johnson one late in the game, that would have been a touchdown, probably an extra like 60, 70 yards. And then there was also one to Claypool. It was like a jump ball, but the dude didn't even turn his head around. Overall, great game by Big Ben, I thought. Rallied the troops in the second half, showed some leadership there. Najee Harris, tough sledding in the first half, kind of like the whole offense. I don't think it was all of his fault. I would blame more of it on the offensive line. It didn't really look like he had a lot of running room. But then, in the second half, turned it around, made some big plays. My favorite probably being the run that got us down to like the five-yard line. I think it was like a 20 or 30-yard run. Deontay Johnson showed good hands, got hurt, came back. Obviously, the best play by him was the back corner of the end zone. It was getting tipped around, but then for him to catch the ball, come down with it, put two feet down... That was pretty badass. I liked what I saw from the whole receiving core. Juju Smith-Schuster doing, doing Juju things, tough plays where he was catching a swing pass, trucking over Tredavious White, getting, I think it was a first down. If not a first down, it was like a nice eight or nine yard play. But then you also see him celebrating in the locker room with his phone, caught that clutch back shoulder catch that I talked about earlier with Big Ben. So yeah, Juju was Juju. Juju was doing Juju things. Claypool, the moss. I mean, come on. I liked how he played. I mean, the one that really stuck out to me was his blocking on that third and one that we had later in the game. It was in the second half. We just ran the ball. It was like a halfback dive with Najee Harris. It's one of those points where I asked myself or I thought like, hey, if we can't just simply run the ball on a third and one, like what the hell are we doing? This is going to be basically last year. This is 2021. We need to be able to run the ball. We drafted Najee Harris for a reason. We've revamped the offensive line, but Claypool was an important part of that play, getting a nice block, pushing the dude back a couple yards. And then I will talk about the offensive line more as a whole. Subpar, I said this on the podcast, but I think the arrows pointing up, especially how it went from the first half to the second half. Left tackle, right tackle, I thought were the biggest weaknesses in this game. But going back to what I was talking about, Claypool, to get that third and one, running the ball with Najee, in that second half meant something to me. And then the tight end group, Gentry, I didn't really see him make any plays, but he was out there for blocking. If he was part of that second half, somewhat resurgence, we'll give him credit for that. Frymouth, obviously the clutch catch in the middle of the field. Ebron, the clutch catch as well. After dealing with all the criticism, him and Deontay last year with the drops, for him to catch that at that point in the game, that was pretty dope. Now let's get to the defense. Cam Sutton. One of the stars. We had a few stars on defense. Uh, the pass deflection on Stephon Diggs off the flea flicker. That was clutch as hell. Whenever I was at the game, you could see that play developing. You're like, oh, shit. Stephon Diggs is wide open. But Cam Sutton closed on that really quick. And then the tackle on fourth at one was just overall surprisingly physical and was really good in coverage on the outside. Definitely made me eat my words from all my preseason takes on Cam Sutton. And talking about eating your words, Trey Norwood. Same thing, started the game and was really physical, was making tackles, had nice coverage 
on Cole Beasley. Had a play or two where you're just like, okay, um, this is why he's still a rookie, but definitely showed up. Definitely showed up. Was really impressed by Trey Norwood and looked like he belonged. Looked like he could be part of this cornerback rotation and play the slot and play meaningful minutes. Could be a good Mike Hilton replacement for us. Joe Hayden, I barely remember them throwing him his way, but had that nice fumble strip at the very end. Pierre didn't get burned. Looked like he belonged. Was weird. I thought he was going to play a little bit more, but eventually got a decent amount of time in the second half. Devin Bush, I was really impressed by Devin Bush. He was flying around out there. Thought he played great. I think that Schobert trade is really going to do wonders for him. The one that really impressed me, the one play was when he sprinted to the sideline. It was like a halfback stretch. It was in the third or fourth quarter, and it looked like they were going to be able to get the angle on it, maybe get some additional yards, but yeah, he sprinted all the way to the sideline, beat the running back to it, and they only gained like two yards on the play. Joe Schobert looked good in coverage, didn't get burned. That's really all we can ask for. I don't remember anything too, too memorable from Joe Schobert, but that is a good thing. That I, I view that more as a good thing, especially considering he's more of a coverage linebacker. Cam Hayward, he was going off, wreaking havoc. You saw the PFF grades that came out today. He was the, wasn't he the leading defensive player in the NFL for a PFF grade? So yeah, I know we don't really pay attention to that that much, but shout out to actually PFF for, I think, getting that right because Cam Hayward was definitely doing work. Isaiah Bugs made a nice stop in the red zone, but then we also got a shout out. The three-headed monster that was TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, and Ingram. They were getting held left and right, but you saw the impact. TJ had two sacks. He had the one strip sack on Josh Allen. Definitely helped the Steelers get some momentum, even though we didn't end up scoring in the first half. That meant a lot. Ingram and Highsmith, left with nothing in terms of sacks, but their presence was definitely felt in both rushing the quarterback, making Josh Allen uncomfortable, or they were getting held, and also in stopping the run. And then the two safeties, make of Fitzpatrick, I thought he was awesome this game, showing some physicality that we normally don't see from Mika Fitzpatrick, ending the game with like 10 tackles. And then Terrell Edmonds, he had the nice open field tackle on Devin Singletary. Kind of got shook the next play, but I think Terrell Edmonds is perennially underrated showed again that he was good in coverage but also made some nice tackles and was there on that I think there was a streak across the middle he was there to kind of almost intercept it it was just that the ball was a little bit overthrown but yeah I thought Minka Edmonds played good the whole defense played really well um like what we saw from the offense how we bounced back in the second half put up 20 unanswered points I know seven came from the pump block but we were up when the pump block happened, we were going to be getting the ball back. So who knows what we would have done at that point because we were leading scoring drives. I was just all impressed with this game. I said on the podcast, this one reminded me of like a 2008 season game where you just kind of grind it out. Ben clutches up. The defense is awesome throughout the game. And uh, yeah, this is just overall a game that points us in the right direction. And it's uh, I think it gets all of Steeler Nation pretty hyped. So let me know what you guys thought down below in the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed the vid. Stay chillin'. Peace.